Morning, everyone. Before I hand over to Stefanie Nyeromir, who are online, um, just a bit of housekeeping. In case there's an emergency or a fire, the emergency exit is if you go towards the elevator, there's a door uh, to the left, Keith, that has a number two on it, and that's the way down and out of the building. If any of you feel ill, feel free to go to Dinesh, and he'll sort you out. And for those who want, there are masks and COVID tests on the reception desk. So without any further ado, welcome to this meeting, and I'll hand over to Yaromir and Stefan, who are online, who will welcome you properly. We are not hearing you. Hmm? You hear him on Zoom? Yeah. No. Uh, hmm? We are not hearing you. I will try to take now, over. Now is okay. Thank you. Uh, Stefan is working. Yeah, okay. Oh, Stefan is working. Okay. Yes. So uh, I will try to take over, uh, Jaromir. Um, Jaromir uh, supposed to be in Belgrade today uh, to uh, be uh, on site, uh, but unfortunately he fell ill just before uh, traveling to Belgrade, and uh, so he is now online. And uh, because of the COVID rules currently in place by the NS OARC, I will, was not uh, able to attend physically uh, in person on the uh, meeting. So I'm also online. Um, this is an unfortunate uh, yeah, situation and we hope to make uh, the best of it. And um, the agenda of today um, is a host presentation uh, by um, RS and uh, to the table as everyone uh, uh, expects and afterwards we'd like to uh, discuss some more about the uh, rfc about uh, nsex free um, guidance i would like to ask uh, the host presenter to uh, give the pre host presentation Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to see all of you over here. And uh, I'm sad that uh, not everybody uh, managed to, to come to Belgrade, especially Yaramir, who uh, we just heard that uh, I was planning to, to, to come here. Uh, I hope that uh, all three conferences that uh, we'll have uh, these days in Belgrade will be successful. And uh, also I wish you a good time in Belgrade uh, and to enjoy this nice weather. I, I was afraid when, uh, when it was scheduled for, uh, for late October that uh, it may be uh, ugly and it knows to be really ugly and uh, dirty at this time of the year but uh, we are lucky uh, right now. I would like just to present uh, uh, what we are doing and how we are doing uh, um, here. Some people know uh, our work and uh, how it's going, but uh, uh, most of you are not familiar with .rs because we are not that uh, popular. We are a small registry and uh, our operations began uh, in 2008, in March 2008, to transition from .yu to .rs. Actually, uh, when Montenegro and uh, Serbia split up, 
uh, Montenegro got ME, and uh, Serbia was awarded with .rs. In 2012, uh, we got also uh, IDNCCTLD uh, .serb, and uh, at the beginning, that shows some success, but uh, uh, since then we are losing uh, uh, serial league domain names, and we are now, right now around 2,500 2, of them. So today I'll just focus, focus on, uh, on main TLD uh, domain name, and that's uh, .rs. Uh, here are some basic uh, registration numbers. Uh, we have a little bit shy of 130,000 uh, domain names. Uh, and uh, if you look at uh, our uh, web page, uh, you can see uh, the second number, and those are active domain names, and there are, uh, there are uh, 100,027, uh, 127,147, that's the number from this morning, and all these numbers are from this morning. Uh, <clears throat> Inactive domains are those uh, which are expired or uh, which doesn't have uh, uh, at least two uh, DNS servers uh, set up with us. So uh, there is uh, 456 uh, of them and uh, we are usually uh, around uh, 1,500 domain names which are expired and uh, some of them will get renewed uh, in, uh, in a period of 30 days, and uh, some of them uh, will be deleted. Log domain names, uh, we have 14,000, but that's, uh, you see that star, and that's interesting. Uh, I'll talk about uh, domain logs later on uh, when I uh, present a little bit uh, our uh, registration uh, software. And DNSSEC is very interesting. A week ago, we had 300, less than 300 domain names signed. Today, we have 1,500. So from 0.2%, uh, we jumped to 14.5 in, in just a week time. And that's a good work of one registrar who decided to sign uh, all domain names. Actually, what they did, uh, uh, they signed, uh, the, uh, they're signing uh, all uh, new domain names, but sent email uh, to old registrants, and uh, most of them accepted to, to, to have their domain name signed. So I'm happy to see this number. This is <coughs> growth over the years, and uh, it is steady. Uh, I'm still waiting to see that exponential curve because uh, looking at uh, other domain uh, uh, registries, I see it is going slow at the beginning and at some point, uh, we did some research uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, uh, we didn't find any correlation and uh, what's triggering that. Uh, but we are still waiting for, 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 for that uh, uh, sudden jump and uh, okay, I'll accept after that to, to, to be steady at some uh, uh, million domain names. <laughs> That's our target. What are good things uh, uh, with our registry? Uh, our operations are based on uh, high availability infrastructure. Uh, it is located in two separate data centers uh, and uh, it is based on uh, VMware site uh, recovery uh, management. You who are familiar with uh, VMware clusters, uh, I'm sorry, this, uh, this picture is in Serbian, and I didn't have time to, to translate that. Uh, SRM, uh, works automatically, and uh, when one host uh, uh, goes down, is the, is the, 
if it is uh, hardware failure or uh, some other failure, other hosts will uh, will take over, and uh, uh, customers and users will not see any difficulties in uh, in uh, our operations and our services. Also, we have uh, <coughs> redundant uh, backups, and also we have uh, a backup on uh, remote site, uh, which is also uh, recovery site. So we can, uh, in uh, less than half an, uh, half an hour, recover all operations on, uh, on uh, long distance. Uh, location. Everything is actually key services are redundant and uh, everything is redundant. Our uh, registration software works in active active mode. Also we have uh, redundant signers, redund uh, redundant uh, um, zone uh, creation uh, tools and uh, uh, also uh, we have redundant uh, uh, DNS, uh, hidden master uh, DNS services. What is not redundant in our system, we try to, 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 to have a, a active uh, database but we decided to, to, to have just single uh, instance of database, but we are doing uh, real-time mirroring with, uh, with uh, uh, remote database, so uh, we can uh, say that we are on safe side. Uh, maybe we'll have some uh, uh, downtime uh, if we have to switch to, to backup uh, database, but uh, that's, that shouldn't be a problem. Also, recent registry software. It is not that recent. <laughs> well, I was thinking today, is that recent, uh, 2016? But uh, that's uh, modern software, uh, which is based on uh, modular ar architecture. Uh, it's working in active-active operational mode right now in two separate data centers, but we can bring more uh, nodes and uh, more data centers later on if it is uh, feasible or required. Software is uh, based on uh, web application, web access, and uh, EPP, standard EPP, with a uh, few small changes uh, in EPP extensions. Uh, in regard of uh, customer data th that we are collecting and uh, also uh, we comply with uh, some requirements from our registrar registrars in regard of finance, so it is uh, also over there. There are a few advanced functions. Uh, when uh, this software was made, uh, that was uh, especially this, uh, this uh, function of three security modes, and uh, I believe that we had, uh, we were the only register, uh, registry uh, that offered that. So we have uh, three security modes. Uh, first, the secure mode where uh, um, changes to the registry uh, can be made uh, in, uh, okay, I can say uh, in seconds, but uh, in minutes. Uh, how it works, uh, registrant through the uh, uh, registrar por portal or registrar do that uh, through the uh, web application, <coughs> uh, registry web application. Uh, email notifications were sent there with, uh, with uh, uh, a code and uh, when customer uh, received uh, email and click on, on, on that code, uh, it goes to verification uh, system and uh, change is done. And the other two security modes are uh, client-side lock and registry lock as well. 
uh, client side lock uh, um, is implemented in different ways with different registrars. Some of them uh, on, on their portal uh, have uh, lock your domain names and you can lock domain names, but uh, uh, you can also on the same button <laughs> unlock domain names. And that's, uh, uh, I'm trying to explain to them. Uh, same thing if you have a, a really new, uh, new uh, door and uh, lock on the door, uh, high tech, and you leave a keys over there. So <laughs> we're working with registrars to, to fix that. And registry uh, lock, works usual way, uh, we need three, three contacts, separate co contacts uh, to confirm uh, registry unlock, and uh, two of them have to confirm uh, that operation, and uh, we check uh, uh, that confirmation on different uh, ways, uh, either SMS or phone call or email, so we are sure that <coughs> domain unlock uh, is, is uh, really requested by uh, authorized persons. Also, we have automated uh, accounting and uh, registration system which, wor which works 24-7. Uh, I don't know, some uh, two years ago, uh, our uh, banking system went to 24-7 as well. So uh, if somebody wants, actually some registrar uh, wants to, to uh, do advance payment uh, uh, anytime during the night or during the weekend or uh, holidays time, uh, it, will, it will be immediately on their account uh, uh, within our uh, registry system. And also notification and verification uh, I mentioned that uh, with uh, the secure mode. Uh, we also sent notification about uh, domain expiration uh, and uh, also uh, confirmation of changes uh, to the registrants. There is also option that registrar can choose uh, will they send notification to, to registrants or uh, registry will do that? So uh, we are not just pushing uh, that we are sending notifications, except uh, first one, we require verification of uh, email address uh, immediately after, after uh, registration of, uh, of the domain name and uh, that's it, what we require from, uh, from uh, registering. And uh, uh, this software was, uh, was designed and uh, made uh, with security in mind. And uh, we have uh, restricted, it is easy to do when, uh, when you have uh, known customers and uh, having, uh, I don't know, I believe 45 or some, something around 45 registrars. Uh, those are uh, known customers, so we can do uh, IP whitelisting. Uh, and uh, also we have uh, uh, access, uh, while talking uh, uh, about EPP, EPP access, uh, we have pre-shared uh, uh, keys uh, that are used to confirm uh, who uh, who is accessing our, our system. For web, uh, we also have whitelisting plus two-factor identification uh, to log on, uh, on um, our registry system. Those are uh, some uh, screenshots and uh, Lydia, I will share these slides with you, but I'll just blur some, <laughs> some things because uh, uh, I made these screenshots uh, recently and uh, didn't have time to, to do that. Uh, also, uh, there is a uh, really nice option and uh, most registrars are satisfied. We, we don't have uh, uh, feedback from all of them uh, with this. This is just uh, 
uh, one screenshot uh, they can be changed and also all the all those fields are clickable this is uh, administrative uh, uh, software screen so they can click and see what domain name uh, names uh, will expire on certain day and also what domain names are uh, uh, are deleted or are going to be uh, deleted. Also, I believe this is transfer. Uh, they can they can follow transfer and uh, they can follow a lot of uh, a lot of uh, things in in graphic mode and also uh, in reporting uh, mode. I can say that uh, our DNS infrastructure is robust, but. Uh, we need to do some improvements. You can see we have uh, six uh, DNS servers. One of them, which is historical one, uh, that uh, we, we were using at the beginning in 2008, so we kept uh, that uh, <coughs> server till now. <coughs> but we are plan planning to introduce new one uh, since uh, we are unable to, to, to get IPv6 uh, uh, address over there and uh, I will see what to do with that. Um, and also uh, we are looking to improve those uh, Unicast nodes uh, that we have. We have two Unicast nodes uh, from uh, NetNode and uh, from PCH but uh, uh, to, to, to have really robust DNS infrastructure, we'll need uh, more Anikas nodes. Uh, we were working uh, with uh, Slovenian guys. Benjamin, where are you? <laughs> uh, to, to, to make regional uh, uh, DNS Anikas system, this pandemic uh, slow, uh, has slowed uh, us down, but uh, I hope that uh, uh, we'll continue and we'll have uh, uh, that Anycast uh, up and running right now. We are now in uh, some testing modes and uh, uh, we'll have to, 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 to finish that. What can be better? We and uh, probably all of you, we need new young people. Uh, not a lot of people in Serbia are interested in working in, within registry and uh, uh, in D DNS uh, uh, stuff. It is probably boring for them, but that's uh, because they don't know uh, much about DNS. I have to say that uh, I really enjoy uh, being in this industry and uh, it is uh, pretty challenging and uh, uh, not easy uh, stuff. It looks simple at the beginning, but uh, when you get uh, hands-on, uh, it is it is very complicated. Also, we are understaffed. There are only 13 of us and uh, only three persons in uh, in uh, technical department, and uh, we. That's first point over here. Uh, we need to speed up and uh, and do more uh, more research and development uh, uh, stuff uh, in the in the registry um, I hope uh, that uh, uh, we'll have opportunity to work with some of you uh, if we can uh, help or uh, add any value to uh, stuff you're working there are a lot of registries uh, within sensor community that are doing really great job uh, with research and de development and uh, we would like to, to jump on that uh, wagon. Also, uh, one of the things uh, that uh, are on uh, priority list is uh, to solve legal issues uh, concerning uh, domain name abuse. Okay, we have uh, some uh, some tools uh, and uh, also we are using uh, uh, other services uh, to find uh, abusive domain names uh, 
it can get better, uh, again, research and development uh, stuff, but uh, <coughs> when we, uh, when we uh, find abusive domain names, we do not have right to suspend or uh, delete those domain names. And the uh, legal system in Serbia, as, as far as I know, uh, everywhere in Europe, is uh, is uh, pretty tough, uh, pretty tough, uh, and uh, registries cannot cannot do uh, much about that. But uh, at least we need some organization that has uh, legal uh, rights to uh, suspend domain names and uh, to speed up this this process. Right now, it is only court or uh, special prosecutor for for. Um, uh, high technology uh, crimes and uh, it takes a lot of time. Uh, in past few years we, we had a lot of abusive names uh, in regard of uh, um, green certificates for vaccination uh, stuff and uh, we were suspending those domain names but uh, only because uh, registration contact data were, were wrong, so we were using our uh, general terms uh, to suspend them. Also, uh, we would like to intensify the role of, uh, of uh, RANIS CERT. RANIS CERT uh, main task is to fight abusive domain names and uh, uh, domain name abuse but also uh, we would like to, to, to have um, uh, more um, information uh, about domain names, about DNS systems, and uh, um, to educate people how to uh, use them and how to fight uh, uh, different, uh, different abusive uh, behavior of them. And also we will need uh, some infrastructure upgrade uh, it is not that much, but uh, uh, we'll have, I, I already mentioned that uh, we have to upgrade a uh, uh, little bit our DNS and to, to, to have uh, uh, any casted uh, all uh, nodes. And also we'll need some uh, additional uh, hardware to harden uh, our operations uh, within, within registry. That's it. If you have questions, I would be glad to answer them. Here is microphone. Alex Miovo from Nikto.at. AT. Um, I'm wondering, you're saying you have three people in technical yes. setup. Do those three people do the 24-7 operations as well? Sorry, I, I, I cannot yeah, it's hear a, you. It's a little bit hard here. Um, do the three people do the 24-7 technical operations and on, on, on duty? Uh, or do you have yes, some, but, something uh, else? There, there is no need since uh, everything, is, uh, uh, everything is redundant. If something fails, okay, we have uh, uh, information about that and uh, Sometimes we have to, to wake up uh, right. okay. in the middle of night and, uh, and, and do stuff, but uh, most of the time, actually, we didn't have uh, any accidents during the night, and that's okay. it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I want to congratulate you with the... Uh, uh, increase of your signed DNSSEC uh, domains. And I think there will be uh, quite some people in the room that will might be able to help you with uh, your any cost uh, improvements of your uh, setup. Next, we will go to uh, the tour de table. And uh, let's see if Jaromir is uh, again possible, uh, uh, is able to speak again. I don't hear Jaromir, so 
sadly. Um, I will continue uh, with the to the table. And um, the first is uh, Belgium. I don't know if someone is available from Belgium. No, uh, and Stefan, no one from Belgium could attend. So they put their slides. Um, so okay. we'll put the slides on the meeting page that you can check after the meeting. Okay, thank you. Next up is uh, Sira, and I think Jake uh, should be able to uh, say something about that. Yes, hello. Good afternoon, everyone, or uh, morning at your time and night time at mine. Uh, one moment. Are you going to show the slides, or am I to share a slide, or just talk about it? You should be able to see them. Okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, we just recently upgraded our registry software to Fury version 8. Uh, with that, uh, a, a bunch of improvements and features. Uh, the most notable thing there would be our new zone publish setup. Uh, we're no longer using Perl scripts that I wrote years back. Uh, it's finally uh, Java. Uh, it's a bit faster than it used to be. And we're currently uh, waiting for new HSMs to arrive. Uh, these are Jamalto HSMs. And all, all of our systems have been migrated to uh, Red Hat 8. Uh, our new EPP system is done, uh, fully converted to the API RESTful backend. Um, uh, our Anycast portal for our secondary DNS product uh, just recently migrated to AWS. So we, we've done a large uh, refresh. Uh, we, we very much have worked on scaling and by uh, uh, putting it into AWS, we have access to a bunch of uh, tools and features uh, like uh, Open Search, which we are using to replace our uh, Splunk installation. Uh, our DNS firewall recursive product uh, recently launched its off network agent. So uh, this would allow uh, users that are not inside their enterprise walls to uh, still use an app and or a module to um, be protected by our, our DNS firewall product. Uh, our data lake uh, constantly growing uh, tons and tons of PCAP information and such uh, in there. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing more and more uh, research and such to uh, figure out uh, all the things we didn't know about what was in our data. Um, we are currently on our Anycast product at uh, 46 million uh, delegations under management and handling about 51 billion queries per day. Uh, that's uh, 484 top level domains, almost one third of the root zone. Um, on our uh, Canadian Shield product. This is our uh, free DNS firewall service that we're providing to all Canadians. Uh, we've recently partnered with uh, Mozilla, who has made us a default uh, DOE provider for uh, users inside Canada. So we have hit about 4 million plus users, and we are uh, finding new and novel ways to uh, monitor and report on that uh, availability and round trip times, et cetera, which I'll speak to a little bit later on in the DNSO work presentation. And uh, infrastructure as code for everything, uh, literally uh, moving everything to Terraform and Ansible. Um, and, and we're looking now at doing things like Kubernetes and Docker uh, to give us more options and flexibility in the things we wanna work on and, and solve. Uh, that's it for me. Any questions regarding that or do we do a question period? It's been a while. Thank you, uh, Jake. Uh, quite some uh, achievements and uh, future uh, expansions uh, for you. Um, I don't have any questions at the moment. 
and uh, I don't, can't see the room, so I don't know if there are questions from the room. Mm. Nobody yeah. is at the mic, so I assume no questions from the room either. Sorry, Next up you. is a switch. Sorry? Oh, state. On the big stage. Uh, hi, this is Oli from Switch. So uh, our slide is much shorter. Um, so the main achievement, I would say, is uh, has been like two weeks ago, where we managed to get the one millionth signed domain in .ch. But the sad story is nobody actually brought cake. We were promised cake and nobody brought cake. So I'm a bit sad about that, but the million is nice. Um, basically, this is an achievement for us because in, like two years ago, we were at below 5% DNSSEC signed domains, and now it's 42%. Um, obviously, this is because we have a financial incentive program, so registrars get cheaper domains if the domains is signed with DNSSEC. If it's correctly signed, we monitor this. Um, so they pay less, and obviously that's a quite the incentive, so it went up very fast. Yeah, then uh, additionally, we made an, a change to our uh, CDS uh, implementation. So CDS allows people to like insert the DS record for the DNSSEC signed domains without going through the registrars. They can just like put it in the, in the DNS via CDS records. And we added support for a new um, draft, which is called Authenticated uh, DNSSEC Bootstrapping. It's by uh, Peter Thomason and Niels Wiesiol. And um, basically, this allows you to secure your um, CDS records even before you've inserted. So if the domain is not DNSSEC signed before, you, if it's quite hard to bootstrap the domain securely because you don't have like any authentication in the DNSSEC yet that you can trust on. And uh, usually in most CDS implementation, they, they just like scan your domain daily for a few days and, and if everything is in order over a lengthy period of time, they will assume, also we will assume, that like the, 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 there is no like forgery going on, right? And uh, this draft allows to um, secure this, this bootstrap phase by also co-publishing the same CDS record in a different domain which is already signed, so it's basically in the, in the domain's name server domain, you can co-publish the CDS records, and then you can build trust from the start. So we implemented this draft, and basically to speed up the bootstrapping process, so when you, um, when you implement this draft on the name server side, you can immediately, immediately so after one domain, uh, one day, um, yeah, bootstrap your DNSSEC domain, and uh, if it's not authenticated according to the draft, it's uh, three days. So um, another thing we are currently doing is getting rid of old uh, DNSSEC algorithms. Um, so everything that contains uh, SHA-1 in its name, so also in, in key algorithms and also the SHA-1 digests. Um, we had a lot of them and we want to get rid of them and first we started by asking nicely can you basically switch and this didn't help much so now we are a bit more like we are putting a bit more force on it by not allowing like inserting new records that would introduce a new key set with uh, SHA-1 records. And, uh, but at the moment, we are still allowing rollovers, but not new inserts. And eventually, we'll also like, uh, we will prohibit uh, inserting rollovers as well. And starting next year, we will actively delete records that co still contain uh, SHA-1 digests, for example. Yeah, and the plan for next year is we are thinking about implementing C-Sync, which is, uses the same technologies basically than the CDS, so it makes sense for us to, to think about this, but it's not like set in stone yet, but uh, yeah, we're thinking about it so we could also extend the existing technology to allow people to change their name server delegations, for example, as well. Yeah, that's it from us. Any questions? Thank you very much.
Um, I see someone running, but not going to the, to the mic. Okay, I'll have a, a question. Yep. Uh, the DNS Resilience Program, um, what, when did you start with this program and what do you expect from the future? So um, we started, I think it was two years ago. I'm looking to Jessica, she knots, yeah, exactly. Um, so, at, uh, and it is, uh, it is set to be, it will go up until 26, I think. And like the, the first iteration basically said that uh, domain must be DNSSEC signed to get, so then the renewal will become cheaper. But like the, um, the, the requirements to get the cheaper domain price, they will, they will increase with each year basically. So um, currently it's DNSSEC only, but um, in the future it will, for example, be you have to have a DMARC record and SPF records as well on the domain. And further after that, we are currently thinking about uh, um, Dane, for example, could be a requirement for, for the future then. So, yeah, but it will finish in 26 and then it's done. Yeah. Okay, and what about the share one uh, issue? Do you the, also want, uh, want to include that to uh, exclude um, incentives if they do not, uh, if they do have share one? And so basically this problem will solve, uh, will solve itself because we will ex uh, effectively delete all SHA-1 keys next year. So they are forced to use something newer if they still want to use the resilience program. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, next up uh, is uh, Cizetnik. I hope that uh, the mic of Jaromir uh, works again. So, how about now? Yes. Great. So, finally, on the third attempt. So, <laughs> so uh, I don't see my slide yet. Okay, is there now? Great. So, first, uh, if I had have an opportunity to speak now. So I, I would like also to welcome you at, at the workshop and apologize for not being there. Uh, unfortunately, I, I've got myself uh, positively tested for COVID just about when I was packing to, to the airport. So uh, um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I couldn't come. Uh, that reminds us that this disease is still with us. So. Uh, take care when you are there. Uh, and with regard to our uh, updates, um, so we have quite a interesting, few interesting updates with our Moya ID uh, identity service that after long period, we finally uh, this year managed to notify uh, this authentication service according to the EIDAS regulation. Uh, it, it happened in June. Uh, this year and July, it went to the production, which actually means that all all the users of, of Moy ID can actually use Moy ID not just to, to access the to the governmental services of the Czech Republic, which was possible for two years already, but also to all the governmental services uh, around the Europe in the EU countries. Uh, so the other thing that we are working on is the that we are trying to deprecate all two-factor authentication methods that we provide in, in Moya ID uh, since the beginning. And it's the one-time uh, one time token OTP. Uh, this is this old method when you have to type uh, those codes uh, generated in the Google Authenticator and uh, similar apps. And we also deprecate the, our own old application that we replace with, uh, replace with the more, more modern application. So we think that these old methods are uh, already uh, behind their uh, time. So right now we only rely on two applications uh, or two methods. And one is the FIDO uh, security keys and the, and the new mobile app that provides um, modern features like the touch ID and face ID. Uh, we also are trying to improve a little bit uh, the identification or verification of legal entities in, in Moya ID itself. 
so far, we have solved the problem of how to verify um, physical persons uh, via checking and linking with the citizen registry. But uh, now we uh, we work a little bit uh, on the organization side as well. Uh, the government uh, helped us a little bit with that because we, for many years, we have something called data boxes, which is office, official way how the government is um, talking to the uh, people and uh, organizations with the, all the information uh, that's relevant to the relationship to the government. And uh, there is also some out simple authentication service uh, linked to these data boxes. And recently, government decided that uh, all organizations must have these uh, data boxes, not just those that uh, like had to do that, had to have it for some other reasons. But everybody, uh, and that's that's even including the self-employed uh, people, as the uh, like the something which is between the uh, physical person and uh, and legal person. And uh, this is this will happen in since the uh, first of the January next year, where there'll be like two about two million more data boxes assigned to these uh, self-employed people, and we can actually take advantage of this uh, system of data boxes that we can use it to identify the uh, legal person because uh, they have to they they can uh, at least if they want to self self verify they can use this to send us a message through this system, and then we know who sent this, this information. Uh, in the registry, a um, couple months ago, we deployed a new system, how we handle out and for. Uh, I, I talked about this uh, uh, more in the last uh, Centertech um, workshop in Vienna. So I will just refer you to the presentation from the last workshop. The, the sense of this change was that we, uh, up to that, up to deployment of this, we actually handled the out info as a, in plain text in the registry. So uh, we switched to the to the system there that uh, now we are storing the hash of out info, which has some consequences that uh, it's not possible to retrieve the out info from the system, uh, but it must be always like. Um, uh, transfer to the person that needs it at the moment it's generated. In the presentation I made in Vienna, I, I also mentioned we, would, we want to take care of completely ourselves on generation of this uh, out in force, but we had to change this. And uh, at the end, in the deployed version of the system, uh, we still allow the registrars to take care of that and they can generate out info and store it, but they must uh, they must immediately uh, send it to that to the person that uh, asked for the out info. There is actually RFC uh, that talks about this, how this should be done. And but this is all in the, in the presentation. We are also working on the new verification portal. Um, this is uh, also part of the work that uh, uh, Oron for uh, uh, .be started in the, in the group of people that are trying to make the um, a uh, similar uh, system for verifying uh, natural and uh, legal persons registrants. So uh, in, in line with what the, the other are doing, we created like new portal where when we ask somebody to, uh, we want somebody to, to verify, we point them to the portal and on the portal, they will have the ways how to, how to verify themselves via different means, could be EID, uh, where EI does could be that they will ask to to send them some snail mail letter, or um, they will go to do some office to to show ID. We are still working on this, so more about this will come in the future. Uh, you probably know that as part of this Reggie ID uh, um, project that we allowed uh, uh, our registrants to already self-verify themselves via EI does EID and use it in our domain browser uh, registrant portal where they can have some features when, when they link it. But unfortunately, there was just a handful of people uh, tried try that. The thing is that people usually don't know about it, that they, uh, they can do it. So so we decided, and it's quite controversial, I would say, uh, to, to mail to all the foreign registrants information that they can do that. Uh, 
I understand well that it's a little bit controversial to spam like registrants about the features uh, features of the registry. But since this was about only foreign registrants, we we decided to do that. Uh, it was just like a couple of days ago, so I don't have the yet the results. But um, that is this is probably the only thing we can do to to uh, give them a chance how to how to do that. And we are also uh, working on the performance test of EPP. This is also interesting thing that we never know how our production um, actually could how good it can perform. Uh, and definitely, we do some performance testing on the test environment, but this is always never the same like production environment. So, so right now we are working how to like the uh, be able to do the performance testing in production. That means either do some uh, like uh, plant outage in the night and uh, test all the interfaces, how the, do, do they perform, and at the same time not uh, uh, destroy the logs and the database and everything, be able to maybe roll back to the to the status before the test. So I saw that some somebody else has also performance test on the on on the uh, TDT slide. So I I would be interested to to hear more uh, how some other registries are doing this if they are doing this. With regards to the infrastructure, we finally uh, completed uh, the um, our own fiber uh, from the office to the data center. Uh, uh, so far, we had a um, uh, leased, uh, leased line, and uh, now uh, it's our own fiber, so we can we have full control over this. Um, and right now, we are working on the backup to have uh, another uh, another line. Uh, we also started to work on the reduction uh, of power consumption. We did a, a quite um, deep inventory if all the servers that we are running in the data center they are worse to be uh, online and uh, of course we found out that there are many many servers that uh, are serving for some testing purposes or some uh, things like this where uh, the people that were using them they use use them like once a year twice a year or uh, not very often so we switched off those those servers and uh, I, i'm not sure if it's if it's correct, but I think we were able to reduce like by one third the the consumption of the power in the data center by this uh, doing this the review of the uh, if everything what is there is still needed. And in the office, we also start to play a little bit with how we can, for example, do the uh, central uh, control of the of the, our heating system. So we bought this smart uh, uh, control of of our uh, heaters. Uh, we have not done anything like um, lowering temperature or things like this, but we wanted to at least know uh, and have possibility to control when this problem will emerge and we will have to somehow uh, to, to reduce, for example, temperature. And we started, uh, we have Anycast uh, instances almost everywhere. Uh, in the world, except of Africa, so we started to work on the on the note in note in Africa as well. And uh, just a small uh, sneak peek to the uh, our software that we provide for other also for the other registries. Uh, uh, recently, there was a new version of Node DNS that that already have uh, long awaited uh, TCP over XDP uh, support, and also the experimental support for DNS over Quick. Uh, my colleague Lebor talked about this at the last DNSO arc uh, in Philadelphia. So uh, just you can just go back to the uh, slides and, uh, and the recording from this presentation, and you will find more there. And uh, we also have this um, a small DNS probe that, were, that we used to collect the, the uh, traffic from the, our uh, Anycast cluster. And uh, the latest feature I found out could be interesting is that uh, the, this this support. Now the aggregate, aggregation on the on the data that that's collecting, and that's it for me. So if you have some questions, I will uh, be happy to answer them. There's no one in the room. Thank you. Okay, thank you.
Next up is uh, Dinek. Hello, good morning, everyone. So, um, Dinek has several things to do, not as much as CSETNIC, I guess. Um, so, what we have done, we have set up a new uh, location in Johannesburg, which is quite impressive. We started as a customer request to our Anycast system, and um, we had nothing there and built it up in about five days. So, um, yeah, really impressive work from our DNS team. Um, we are in the process of uh, evaluating XOT, Xferova TLS, for uh, zone transfers to, um, as a replacement for, for our um, VPN system, so it will simplify the, um, the name server locations. Um, yeah. Our data science team is working on registrant data verification. Um, Lately, they um, noticed that we have a vast amount of um, failed uh, address validations. So they looked at that and um, noticed that there are some sort of multi-line uh, messages, multi-line addresses that they don't recognize as real addresses. So they uh, re-evaluated them, them with, um, with, a, with a corrected format. And um, yeah, that's what they did. Um, also, they improved our registrar dashboards with uh, business insights. And um, in the re registry system, we are um, rewriting our whole registry system because um, we are moving to a private cloud. So everything has to be cloud native. And um, yeah, that's what we did. Any questions? Thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, what is the impact on the use systems when you use uh, XOT? Um, yes, so um, we are not uh, referring to um, our, our zone files as a public um, thing. So um, when we are transferring our zones to our name server locations, there has to be in a, that has to be in a secure way. Um, Historically, we use a VPN connection for that, and um, in the case that we are spinning up new um, usernames of our locations, we s uh, try to simplify that. And um, XOT is a, is a nice way to, to secure the zone transfers other, uh, other than VPN. Okay, and would it be possible to give a presentation about it in, at another meeting? Um, how you set up and uh, what uh, reasons were. You, you um, summarize it now, but it would be nice to have a bit of more uh, information for other people who might be able uh, to learn from that. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I tried to convince them, so I also tried to convince them to have a presentation on the new, uh, the new uh, name server location system they, they invented. But um, yes, I will definitely try to con convince them on that. Okay, I saw someone uh, walking to do a mic, so uh, please uh, ask a question. Hi, Brett Kern, I'm in it. Um, as your presentation was much shorter than Jeremy's, I wonder if you could give a little bit more detail on the, um, the, the rapid deployment of five days of a DNS node. That, that sounds very fast. Uh, I'm interested to know how you did it. It really did sound very, uh, very fast. Um, Actually, it's not a hardware location, it's a virtual location. So we have uh, some, some sort of um, company who spun up the virtual servers. They uh, do provide um, BGP, a full BGP feed. So um, we are able to, to spin up a location, virtual location, and uh, deploy like we are using a hardware location on that. Now, now five days sounds like a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, actually, they, they also were very fast to spin up these, these virtual thing. Um, yeah. It all goes back to communication with them. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Afnik. Good morning, everybody. So my name is Vincent Vignon from AFNIC. 
And the main achievement uh, during the last months was the uh, migration of uh, all the TLD we operate on our new registry system. Uh, it was uh, the biggest achievement for us and we spent most of our time on that. So now we operate uh, around 20 um, TLDs on this new um, registry system. There is only one left on our legacy system, but it should be migrated by the end of this year. So by the end of this year, the legacy should be uh, behind us. Uh, we also signed a new TLD and we have started to provide the OT environment and we plan to open the production system next year, beginning of next year. Uh, we also have started to change um, the NSX parameters. Um, we, we read the RFC 9276 and the proposal uh, sounded reasonable for us. So we decided to change our NSX3 parameters and resign all the zones. Uh, we are just at the beginning of the process, so we resign only, I guess, two or three zones, but all our zones should be modified in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, we also had the new release of Zone Master this, uh, this summer. Uh, if you are interested uh, to participate, we are still waiting for people that, if you want to have the tool uh, on your own language, I don't hesitate to talk to me or there is also Mark uh, in the room and Sandosh in the room. So Sandosh and myself, we will stay the whole week. So if you want to participate, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. If you have some uh, requirement, we need something special on the tool. And uh, last week we faced um, unexpected consequences of multiple fiber cut. Uh, in south of France, in the middle of the night, there was uh, three fibers cut in different places, and um, it was impossible for us to reach our data center, and uh, it was uh, a long night for us. Of course, we are not here to fix the data center, but uh, we, it was difficult for us to check our, our systems. Of course, there was no interruptions in the SRS or in the DNS publication, but it was um, a, a, bad, uh, a bad night for us. And uh, that's all. If you have any question, No? It's okay, so everything was clear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Vincent. Next up is uh, .ie. Paul, I think. Hey everyone, um, obviously I couldn't make it to Belgrade this weekend, so uh, it's good to see everyone. So uh, just a quick uh, go through of some of the stuff we've been working on over the last six months. Um, obviously we went live with RPKI validation in our production data center. So this is where we have our primary uh, registration registry system and where we do our primary sound signing and publish publication. So that seems to be going fine. Uh, we found one or two bugs in one of our ISPs um, or one of our IP transit providers with how they were doing RPKI. So that was was interesting, but uh, you know, it's good to have it in place. Um, one of the projects that we kicked off recently is a renewal of our DNS infrastructure. So basically, you know, there's we're on different versions of Red Hat that are coming end of life. So migration to Red Hat 8, latest versions of uh, DNS software. Um, as part of that, or you know, adjacent to that, uh, our zone build architecture is going to change in 2023. Uh, Jake mentioned a little bit about that in his presentation. So obviously, our current system is built around Perl, or the, the scripts are actually building the zone. It's going to move to a Java-based platform, um, and as part of that, obviously, we'll be upgrading our registry platform to Red Hat 8. Um, one of the things that we've been doing over the last year is um, <clears throat> on the data science point of view is we've been running analysis of the zone. So web crawling, um, you know, doing content analysis on websites, you know, TLS and DNS analysis. So we have about a year worth of data now at the moment. So I know Sebastian has been uh, presenting or 
he's done some presentations about some of the work he's done on that and some blog posts. So that's kind of an ongoing project. And kind of part of that in a more wider point of view is we got Entrada up and running in the cloud. So obviously it's running an AWS here in Dublin and you know the lads are doing stuff with Terraform and Packer with it, but um seems to be going so good so far anyway. So uh, that's everything for me. If anyone has any questions. Thank you very much. I have uh, one question at least. Um, did you find anything interesting uh, information information when looking at the data uh, from Entrada? Um, yeah, there's a, I mean, there's some some of it is to do with obviously we're we're getting data from obviously the unicast nodes we're running ourselves plus from one anycast provider. So we've seen some interesting spikes where traffic hitting Dublin was coming from Sweden, um, you know, some random times like this. So, you know, there's some interesting stuff like that. Obviously, Sebastian has been kind of working on that most of the time. So I imagine he might have a presentation for it at a future meeting. Um, I think he might be doing a presentation at Centre or D in the future. So he might he might go into a bit more detail on that. But uh, yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, it's it's kind of giving us some insights into you know, some of the top uh, domains, especially on the infrastructure side, um, you know, that we wouldn't have necessarily seen before. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I look forward, look forward to the presentation of uh, Sebastian. Um, I don't see anyone at the mic in the room. So we go next to uh, isoc.ru, uh, Israel. Can you hear now? Okay. So uh, yeah, this year we uh, have doubled in size, theoretically, uh, launching a new TLD. And actually, I'm happy to uh, see that the problem uh, with the slide, which is one of the problems with this uh, new IDN format, going right to left, and uh, everything is messing up. So the quotes were supposed to be in the right, and then another one on the left. As you can see, it's not. And it's not intentional, it just happened, and that's the problem with the right to left scripts. Uh, when you try to blend them in uh, all kinds of uh, apps like browsers and uh, I don't know, social media, and etc. So, as far as the IDN, the XN that uh, dash dash is fine, but when you have to make it visible to uh, users, uh, it kind, kind of sometimes messes up. So, that's the biggest challenge we are facing now with the new TLD. Hopefully it will get done. Uh, it's more, it's uh, very similar to Arabic uh, script, which is also right to left, and uh, there are mutual uh, things that uh, can be managed. Um, another thing that was a problem for us uh, was uh, blending that with the browsers, uh, know, getting to know the problem with the PSL and the time frame that it takes uh, to blend a new uh, domain worldwide, such that the browsers will actually know that it exists. So uh, usually it's about six months, and that's a long time, unless you interfere inside and try to compile the code yourself, which we had to do. Uh, it was not that kind of, uh, not very fun to compile uh, Chrome. Um, but then again, uh, it's there and it has to be uh, made. So yeah, that was a setback of uh, the project. Now it's more or less in the air. It's signed. Uh, we will launch it next uh, month. Um, the, another uh, big thing that happened uh, this year was the upgrade of our registry code, uh, especially the APIs. They are all uh, RESTful, fully RESTful uh, for the clients, as well as the backend. Uh, so that was a major uh, step uh, forward from a very old code. Um, 
The DNS itself was uh, switched to new masters, which is kind of a hard operation uh, while being alive. So all the masters, uh, both hidden and uh, delivery masters, were all uh, uh, switched to new ones. And um, as that's as far as technology. Uh, we do face a big increase in volume, around two times, maybe one and a half times, which we usually consider, uh, we see it because of the, you know, the regional unrest of where we are. Uh, there's always that in the, in the background. Um, we still investigate the nature of it, why is it, but it's for a long, uh, for a long time, about two years now, we see a big increase in uh, volume, which is not from a uh, legal law or normal user, it's most of it is garbage. Uh, so uh, we're now implementing a BI uh, uh, infrastructure to do uh, intensive investigation and analy analysis of, uh, of the problem. And as well as on, when doing that, the improvement of monitoring tools will also aid. Uh, and I think that's it for our year. Uh, if there are any questions. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, as you mentioned, it is uh, quite uh, difficult to get a new TLD started. Uh, would it be possible to give an, a presentation at another meeting? Was for me? I'm sorry. Yes. Can you can you ask again? Yeah, that, that, I'm sorry. That was for you. Um, is it possible to give an, a presentation about uh, uh, getting a new TLD online and the next meeting or? Well, uh, that, uh, yeah, sure, of course. That might be, of course. I'd be happy to do. Okay. That. Um, a long and story. <laughs> <laughs> um, we would like to. Um, give uh, uh, everyone a little break to get some coffee if that's uh, wanted by the room. Um, I can see the room at the moment, so can please everyone who wants coffee, I see uh, two hands from Brett, some more hands, ah yeah, see, let's have a break until uh, 11.30 and then we will resume uh, with G G -R -P -R -S. GPRS, sorry. Have a good break and see you soon. Jedan, dva, tri, četiri, pet, šest. Hoće da probaš. Jedan, dva, tri, četiri, pet, šest. Jedan, dva, tri, četiri, pet, šest. Hoćeš, a? Jedan, dva, tri, četiri, pet, šest, sedam, osam, devet, deset, jedanest, dvanest, trinet. Jedan, dva, jedan, dva, jedan, dva, jedan, dva. Da, mi ćeš glasnije pričam, to. A, ma ka meni. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. P, 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 p.
Dobar dan, dobar dan, pet, pet, dva, pet, tristo, jedan, dva, to je to. Najviše sumnjam na... Ovo je malo sad jače, smanjit ću. Test. Malo zvoni. Ništa što je otvoren taj osmi neki kanal, tako nešto. Test, malo ga samo smanjim. Test. E, da ti je ovo okej? Hoćeš jače smanjim? Okej, ovo je super. I sad imamo ovu glavu koja ako neko visok dođe, znaš, može da ide više. Test, dva. I to ajde ovako, pošto su možda nekad okrati. Ne, ne, oni gledaju tamo. Sada ćemo ovako. Test. Ovo je neka unisex.
GPRS <coughs> will be next in about one minute. Please get seated. We're just waiting to, to people to enter the room after the coffee break. Just give us a minute. Stefan, you're good to go. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, GPRS and Shinita Sato San. If yes. I say it correctly, uh, have okay, can I start? Yeah, yeah, you can start. Okay, thank you. I'm Shinita Sato from JPRS, uh, that is the CC2D of Japan. And I put two bullets here for both about the DNS thing. Um, one is the about the deployment of the local nodes for .jp DNS server. Uh, .jp name server, we have eight name servers uh, uh, that uh, consists of the uh, some kind of diversities. Two is operated by production uh, uh, names, uh, any case provider and Four is operated by uh, different partner organizations, and two, rest of two is operated by JPRS, and pretty much diversity operating things. And uh, we are adding uh, local nodes for .jp in one of our managed name servers. Uh, we started that last year, and uh, very slowly it is increasing, and. Uh, uh, no, it, we, very slowly it, is, it would be increased in this year. So uh, I put that here. Uh, we work, we're working with the domestic ISPs, uh, local ISPs, which has the uh, operating area within our uh, Japan. So that's one. And second one is the changing of the DNS NSX3 parameters. Uh, you know about the RSC ninety two seventy six uh, that would uh, that uh, 
that leads us to change the multi in, in six three parameters, uh, and that is right now working in progress and would be should be done within uh, a month or two. Uh, there we provide we publish DPS that is the DNSSEC uh, practice statement documents. So in that documents we state about the iteration count and the salts of the NSEC parameters and we need to change that before we actually change that in the operation. So if we are going to do that in maybe next week or something like that in a uh, very near future and the actual parameter for the DNS uh, uh, servers that will be changed uh, a little bit after that the DPS is published. Okay, so that would happen also within uh, this year. <laughs> that is our small change for the DNS. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, small question for me. The uh, localized node, is that unicast or any cost? Uh, that is a uh, local node, so it is um, it is uh, one one small unicast node in the uh, global uh, uh, global node. Okay. Thank you very much. Next up is uh, Foundation Restana dot lu. Hello, everybody. This is Guillaume Herbier, technical manager for uh, Fondation Restena, uh, which means I'm the DNS guy uh, there. Um, so what we've been doing recently, um, so we've been ongoing um, um, complete system uh, infrastructure redesign, mainly driven by, by our ISO certification. So we moved away from CentOS, uh, migrated to Debian, and uh, and try to do uh, more elaborated stuff like like using Ansible a lot, um, you know, um, automating a lot of things. Um, in, but it means that in the meantime, our ongoing projects were kind of put up on hold, uh, at least for uh, deployment and production, the time that we, that we complete this. Uh, this includes uh, the, the DNSX signing chain um, and and our deployment of registry lock, the, the design phase is completed, but but the implementation will be done uh, later this year or beginning of next year. Um, we also plan for the beginning of next of next year uh, um, um, uh, penetration testing uh, of our um, registrar. Uh, systems of uh, registry systems, sorry, uh, which includes the EPP interface and and the registrar and registrant platform. So that that's for our, our registry business. But we are also one of the accredited registrar for the TLU. and on on that field, um, we are started a project to redesign our uh, customer facing registration uh, web platform. Uh, it means that we will develop uh, an API around our registrar uh, backend and devote the, the development of the web interface itself to, to an external company because we're, we don't consider ourselves good at that and we think that, that, that better things will come out if we don't do the, the, the user uh, interface ourselves. Uh, and we are also the, the NREN, so National Research and Education Network uh, Manager for, for Luxembourg. And in this field, we provide a service of, of DNS hosting to, to uh, universities and research uh, institutions and, and high schools. Um, so what we have in place today with that is really all things based on exporting zones and, and we have a project ongoing to move that to a solution that will use PowerDNS as a cornerstone and, and um, well, the recent developing, uh, recently developing catalog zones to, to automate all of this. Um, and it's, well, already, already promising uh, and it, Nice to see that it gets integrated into more and more um, DNS software natively. Thank you. 
Oh, do you have any questions? Nope. So thanks. We've we've lost online participants, but uh, give us a second to fix it. Uh, should we move to the next slide for now? Ooh. Am I? Ah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay, sorry, we've lost online participants, so I suggest we move on to SIDN whilst we fix the online. Apologies, online participants. Recording in progress. Hi, Mark Groenweg from SIDN and didn't prepare this because I hoped that Stefan would uh, do this uh, TDT. Uh, <clears throat> at SIDN we have built our own uh, DNS Anycast. Uh, that's the ns1.dns.nl and Jeroen Bult will give a presentation on the DNS OAC workshop. Uh, we have started to change the NSEC 3 param uh, according to the kinds of the, the current RFC. Uh, we are still in the progress uh, in our testing and acceptance uh, environment, and that's all done uh, with support of NLNet Labs. We hope to do that uh, in production within the coming uh, four weeks, I guess. Uh, we have simplified our own uh, network. That's uh, something in progress for, I believe, a small year now, uh, because we had some security guidelines telling us to do a lot of VLANs for every part of in our network, for all applications, you should have your own VLAN. But as an architect, we have said, uh, uh, you should know what security you want to achieve. So let's reduce the number of VLANs so we are better encrypt uh, with our uh, network. Uh, we have improved our Whois ADAP uh, performance. Our own uh, Whois implementation is based on ADAP, also for .NL. So that's uh, a strong uh, foundation for the, the add-up uh, for, I believe, next year for going in production for that tunnel. Um, we have done a proof of concept like other registries, I believe, in the previous TDTs from last year to go to GitLab for our CI and CD platform. And many improvements for SIDN brand protection, including uh, local search. That's something that's open sourced by our uh, SEDN Labs uh, colleagues, and it's a uh, strong feature for our brand uh, protection for .NL names, but also for .com and others using our uh, SEDN tooling. Oh, I don't have to look there. I can have it there. So that's uh, the major achievements uh, for SEDN in the last couple of months. Any questions in the room or online? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mark. We are back. So um, I can announce uh, the next up is uh, NLNet Labs. Hi. Thank you. Welcome. Benno Wolfreiner, NLNet Labs. So here a brief update of the well, recent software developments we have at NLNet Labs. Um, as uh, Mark just mentioned, uh, Open Day in the SEC developments. We are working with SADN uh, for the new NSEC 3 uh, recommendations, settings re recommendations. Specifically, it's about the salt length zero for migration, so my, for zone migration. If you migrate to salt length zero for new zones, new signing, we don't have that problem, but we're expecting to solve it in the next couple of weeks. Uh, other things, uh, we mentioned it also earlier this year, uh, development of high availability in OpenDNSSEC, uh, expecting to finish that maybe end of this year or early next year. We're uh, wrapping up stuff here. Uh, Mrs. Dijsit for DNS zones, RFC, zone MD RFC, is finished and will be also integrated in a new release. So the release for, of this October is patch. Uh, bug fixes, not new features. For NSD, uh, as we presented earlier this year, we introduced 
zone verification, or formerly known as credence, in, the, in NSD4. So it's now an integral part of NSD4, not a separate product as it was previously. And part of that is also this the IXVR out is part of NSD4. So it can be used as a bump in the wire. Uh, designing a zone, and before publishing, you can feed it through the zone verification feature of NSD4. If everything is fine, green light, it will be published and publicly available. If there's a red light, if there's some error in the, in the new signed, signed zone after update, uh, it's blocked and signaled back that a new sign, of, sorry, a new zone has to be signed and published. Um, other work, this is more proof of concept, this is more, well, wetting your appetite for the future. Zone parsing improvement eh, for large zones, uh, well, a substantial amount of time is just reading the zone file and putting it in the database of NSD. We are optimizing that so the startup time is smaller. Um, and part of that is also data structure improvements. Uh, we do have proof of concept implementations, but that's somewhere in our GitHub, but it's not in our development branch. Um, other things, uh, Guillaume, Jean from LU just uh, mentioned, catalog zones, it's also something on our roadmap. Uh, it's good to have that for all the alternative name servers. Uh, that, and the, the different open source software can work together here and interoperate. Uh, also the, the, the draft, soon to be uh, uh, RFC, has been also been the authors of this draft slash RFC has been the four open source software developer uh, or op the four open source DNS software organizations. Um, for Unbound, uh, we released uh, the proxy version 2 protocol and uh, ACL per interface feature recently in Unbound. Um, well, if you want to have more details here, I'm happy to talk about that uh, during lunch or during the next two days at the OARC meeting. Uh, extended DNS error reporting is part of Unbound, so giving a little bit more information if you have a serve fail. Eh? What kind of DNSSEC issue is there? Is the algorithm not supported? Is it uh, signature uh, expired? Something else gives some more. Or if refused, it's a lame delegation, or maybe the server is still spinning up. Yeah, so you get a little bit more information behind the classical uh, 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 return values you get from, uh, from your name server. Um, and in development, DNS over quick in Unbound. It's in the GitHub. Some people are already, we already get feedback from people. So that's, that's good to hear. So there are people already testing and giving, ID, well, sharing IDs. Um, release date is not exactly clear. It's, it's, we want to test it thoroughly be before we release it. Maybe end of this year, probably early next year. Um, and keep you informed. Um, any questions? Yeah? I see that yeah. Jaromir has a question as well. All right. Yeah. Yaromir, okay, uh, so uh, I have a question about this, that uh, high availability you mentioned in the presentation that you have in development. Can you elaborate a little bit about that, how it will work, like there will be some sensing of keys or how will it work with the HSMs, for example? Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. So it's, uh, the high availability will be kind of two instances of the, of the signer, actually. So you have in OpenDNSSEC a signer, and we call it the policy enforcer. So there will be two instances of the signer, kind of running in parallel. One is being the, well, the, the primary, and one of the silent and the secondary, but they have the same state. And uh, also with replication of the, the HSM. Uh, but there will be one enforcer, so one entity that will say well, this is the next step. So that has to be cl clarity. But that's fine because the enforcer doesn't have, uh, well, it relies on the database, but it has, doesn't have, the, have any state. So if that falls down, uh, you can restart it easily or that's not time critical. So that's the, it's kind of a simple but robust way to implement high availability in OpenDNSSEC. I'm watching you. at you at the screen, sorry, so I maybe should watch into the camera. <laughs> maybe a little bit awkward for the remote participants here. Guillaume, Guillaume Jean. 
Yeah, Guillaume yeah. from .edu. Uh, one question is that, um, well, due to our, our certification, it's, it's kind of complicated for me to rely on, on um, compiled software. So the mm -hmm. policy says we really yeah. should prefer packages coming from, from other official repositories or one from vendors. So my question is, do you have planned to um, release official packages, RPM, DEBs, for, mm -hmm. for the software you, you produce? Yeah. So in, traditionally, we, we, we don't. We didn't. Uh, more recently, we did that for some of our packages. But these are not the DNS packages, but the routing packages. And it was for practical reasons for Rust. So the Rust ecosystem is, well, it's easier for us to distribute these packages to provide that, because the packages from the, for example, for Debian or Appium, there was some, uh, well, still some, st uh, how do you say that? There, it's not that straightforward for them to compile and include and uh, distribute that package. Um, for the DNS software, um, I, th I think we have to discuss that internally because we always relied. So there was a good reason, actually, why we relied on the Debian or RPM uh, or the uh, Red Hat packages because they're very experienced. They know all the interdependencies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and for us, indeed, which kind of do we make a kind of a golden selection? So Red Hat, uh, maybe CentOS. Uh, well, maybe not anymore because people are moving to other distributions. Debian, Ubuntu. Um, so that's why we always relied on the packages. Uh, but I'm happy to talk about you about what's missing currently. Uh, maybe the versions are lagging behind uh, currently with Debian, Open Dataset packages, or NSD or Unbound. And uh, we were in con we, for most of our packages. We are in contact with uh, the Ubuntu, Debian, and the Red Hat packages packages to keep uh, well to keep. Well, well, a good relation with them, also with CVEs, etc. We also notify yeah. them quite early, so that uh, yeah. So also the open, well, the the the, the packages are uh, informed in time. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I I still have yeah. a question, uh, Ben. Okay. You mentioned catalog zones. When can we expect catalog zones? The catalog zones. Uh, <laughs> Maybe okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. One of my software engineers, Willem. Uh, <laughs> please. As soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, start of uh, 2023. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you for. Yeah, yeah, so there's a proof of concept script which you can use with the uh, zone verification yeah. feature of NSD. Yeah, but uh, you, you can use that too if you want to, but uh, it will be, there will be a native NSD implementation. Yeah. So by the, now I have the ma mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another thing about the packages, we do have uh, one uh, distribution for which we do make packages. Yeah. The BSD. And that's free BSD. It's yes. free BSD, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this so yeah, uh, we maintain the free BSD packages for OpenDNSSEC, for example, and NSD. But uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, <laughs> Stefan, uh, early next year. Get yes. Thank sounds. you very much. Okay. Thank you. Next up is .pt Portugal. Hello. So for the past couple of months, we did some minor updates on our registration system. And we integrated uh, IE2 that uh, does some validation on the contact data and also on the domains. Uh, we did some the generation of the RRCs for the next year. We do this process once a year. Uh, the main thing was developing a new portal for another project that we have that is Confu. It's a trust platform, let's say. Uh, it's a European project that we are part of it, and we develop it the backend internally. 
and we collaborated in many of the security and, and privacy audits that we have uh, because of 27 and 001 and uh, other parts of it. Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Next, Agnes.ic. SI. Hi, I'm Benjamin from Arnes uh, from the SI registry. Uh, current uh, last uh, month we removed uh, admin contact from the EPP. Actually, we don't remove it from the database, but we uh, disallow re uh, updates and uh, new registrations of uh, admin C along with the sorry along with the, the uh, domain manipulation. Uh, we had to, to implement also this uh, new policy uh, in our uh, EPP client, so we released a new EPP client, which is much better than the older one. Uh, another thing we did in the past, uh, we put uh, or we set up all the services we offer to, to, to registrars in H uh, high ability. That means that we have two instances of each server up and running all the time, and when we do upgrades, we switch to another, and uh, services are in, not interrupted. That's except for the EPP, since the EPP has long life connection, so we don't have any provisioning in the EPP at the moment to, to, to do that. Uh, our HSMs are out of end of life, and uh, so we have to, to uh, replace them. And uh, we were quite busy testing HSMs and deciding uh, what to do and yeah. Uh, when we, we will uh, get new HSN, we will also try to, to uh, switch to, to uh, elliptic curve for the signing. Uh, one of the big projects uh, for the, the whole company we have, uh, we are part of academic network. Uh, we would the academic network would replace uh, firewalls, which are all, we are also part of this uh, company, so we had to replace that as well. And that uh, the planning and testing and uh, yeah, getting everything uh, up and running uh, would be quite a challenge. And that would happen next year, but uh, at the moment we, we had to do some testing here. Yeah. Uh, we had, we uh, last year, that's also the part of the firewall project. We moved, uh, relocated some of our networks which were not uh, behind the firewall. Now are, now are they, now are uh, behind the firewall. Yeah, and uh, we, we have also the third location since our both of our locations are the, in, within the same earthquake zone, so we decided to have another uh, location, but uh, those steps are quite slow, unfortunately. And yeah, we, we, had, we got a new VPN also from the, our mother company. And uh, we were quite busy to, uh, yeah, to, to adopt all the uh, access rights and that kind of stuff uh, to, 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 to work with the new firewall, uh, to, with, uh, with the new VPN. So that's from the SI, and if you have some questions. Um. I have this question. Um, did you consider using a cloud solution for the HSM? And why did you or why didn't you? Yeah, 
we did uh, actually uh, consider to, to you to use uh, soft HSM uh, for uh, instead of the hardware HSM, but yeah. Uh, I think our community wouldn't be very uh, satisfied with uh, software HSM. Okay, thank you very much. And if there are no more people in line for the mic, um, then I would like to ask uh, Nominate. I have, I have also a question, if I can. Uh, sorry. sorry. Uh, so, uh, can you uh, and can you maybe share who is the winner of your uh, HSM uh, testing? What, was, what platform will you use? Or uh, is, it, is it secret? <laughs> uh, currently, we use uh, SafeNet Luna, and they are out of uh, end of life. Or end of life. Uh, uh, currently, we tested uh, Utimaco and uh, Luna HSMs, and uh, I'm, and I don't know whether I'm uh, supposed to say that, but I'm not very uh, happy with uh, Utimaco, but the uh, Luna works better. And uh, I have another question. Uh, what actually drives you to remove admin contact? Why did you why yeah, did you decide to do that? It was not technical uh, question uh, to to remove admin contact, but uh, mainly because of the GDPR, because we didn't use uh, admin contact uh, for any purpose. So the, the the admin part decided to remove it, and yeah, we we had to adopt our software and uh, get rid of them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, then next is Nominet. Good afternoon, everybody. Just, I think. Um, here are the scores from the .uk registry. Um, so a few things that we've been working on over the last few month, um, months, we made some changes to the way we drop um, expired domains. Um, traditionally, we've done this in a random fashion. Uh, when the domains really uh, reached a certain point, um, we would have a, um, a, a piece of software that is known, known internally as random drops, which would drop them for re-registration at some point in a 24-hour period. Um, we've now... Um, bowed to member feedback that they didn't like that or they haven't liked that for many years so we've changed this now to um, we published a drop list in advance um, so that people know exactly what domains are going to drop and when they're going to drop and then um, it, it's still a fight to the last minute for people to, 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 to get them but at least they know when they're going to drop and what's going to drop um, uh, as many other people have been doing, we've been working on the um, RFC 9276 NSEC3 guidance. Uh, in actual fact, .uk was already in compliance with this anyway, um, but we have been working through all of our GTLDs, and I'm glad to say they were, they were all done as of last week, so we are now compliant, compliant with that guidance. Um, we've transitioned some more GTLDs in. A um, couple of examples off the top of my head, we transitioned... Dot Pioneer, um, the hi-fi company, and um, dot IEEE, the standards uh, organization into Nominet's GTLD systems. We've completed OS upgrades, um, which I think many other people have mentioned. It's an ongoing project all the time for everybody, I think, but um, we, we have up upgraded our Red Hat systems across the whole infrastructure over the last um, year or so. Um, when we deployed our DNS Anycast cluster um, my Facebook memories are telling me it's seven years ago. It doesn't feel like that, but uh, time flies. Um, we, we deployed a node in Geneva, um, and for various reasons, we've had to decommission that node in Geneva, so we actually moved it to Frankfurt recently. 
Um, that has actually been a roaring success because Geneva was the, uh, one, the DNS node that, we, that, we, that got the least amount of traffic in all of our infrastructure and moving it to Frankfurt has now accelerated it to the node that gets the most amount of traffic. So that was, that was very nice to see. I think that's a reflection on the connectivity available in Frankfurt versus Geneva. The, um, we're also working on, um, have been working on for a while and will continue to work on for the next year or two, something called our technology transformation program. This is deploying new core data centers for our um, core registry applications and, and corporate applications, um, moving to some software defined networking um, constructs, um, pushing almost everything into Kubernetes and containerization. Uh, and improving the security around how we access the network um, to um, you know, improve security. Um, a couple of uh, other things. A couple of other things I haven't mentioned on this slide. We got a new. We've just employed a new CTO, so um, we, we have a new CTO starting in about a week or two's time. So that may obviously mean some changes down the line. We'll see how that pans out. Um, we've also decided recently to, uh, as I mentioned, our D Anycast DNS infrastructure is seven years old, so we're actually planning to, uh, we started the planning progress to, um, to refresh that infrastructure, and that, that won't pro almost certainly won't be just a refresh of the, of the hardware, it'll be um, taking a, a look forward on what the current best practices are and what um, is, is coming down the line and, and doing some different things. And, um, I'd, I'd be interested to know from anybody else in the room, lunchtime or, or, or over drinks tonight, what your plans are in this area and what, um, you know, if anybody's, in particular, I'm interested in knowing anybody who's using um, containerization and Kubernetes within DNS servers to see if that's something that's, that's a thing yet, um, or any other uh, ideas on, on, on in that kind of area that um, people want to, are willing to talk about, it would be, it would be good to know. Um, and then lastly, we've, um, I'm, I'm very happy to say um, Nomina are, are, are trying to uh, get more involved in the DNS community and, and have actually dedicated a role for um, technical community engagement, which, um, which currently is me. Um, and, and that's my update. Any questions? Yeah, Mia has a question for you. Yeah, I have a question related to your first bullet on the on the list. It um, seems to me that most registries do exactly the other way around. They are trying to um, make uh, everything hard for drop catchers to fight for the domains. And it seems to me that uh, if I understand correctly, you like uh, revealed when exactly the time when the domain is deleted, so so they can they can start to fight for the domain. So, uh, what is the reason? Like, um... as, as some of you in the room may know, um, Nominet has had some um, engagement challenges with its membership over the last uh, year or two, um, and uh, 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 this has been this change has been purely due to a consultation with our membership, and that we're, we're driven in to do it because that's what they want um, overwhelmingly. Okay, thank you. I do have a question uh, from uh, Isaac Coyle. We were uh, considering using Kubernetes as a microservices as a DNS platform, uh, using the swarm uh, to make it go up and down as a fact of demand. And if you can manipulate it on clouds, so you can have one region going up, the other one going down, depending on, uh, on the uh, uh, demand. Um, I understand you are checking the same uh, option. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's very early days. I mean, it's literally in the last sort of three or four weeks we've decided that we're going to. Uh, ex we, there, there was a the, our plan was to start looking at DNS infrastructure in next year, uh, but actually, you know, we, we've decided literally in the last month that we're going to, you know, accelerate this. Uh, and so it's very early days as to what we're going to do. It might not involve containerization. Kubernetes swarm at all? Yeah, it's 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 really it's early days, really. But I mean, that, that's why I think I'm soliciting interest for people in the room to to uh, you know come and talk to me about what they're right. planning, what they're doing. I uh, would be happy uh, to Thanks. share knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Brett. Uh, Ray from IC. Not a question, but actually something 
on that question about drop catching, because of course you know I have still some contact with nominates. And um, right, a lot of the rationale was also that by announcing the exact drop time, then the drop catchers, instead of basically sending queries all, all day on the expected day of release, it will actually just concentrate the queries for the domains they want much yeah. closer. So it's basically overall dropping of the, of the actual CPU load and whatever that's supporting those drop catchers. It just makes it easier to handle them. Yeah. So, thanks, Ray. I'm not very close to this process, and I suspect as Ray is married to somebody at Nominate, he's closer than I am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I still have some, uh, one question. You mentioned that you are compliant with the new NSEC3 guidelines. Uh, do you still use opt-out? Um, we current, um, yes, we do currently use the opt-out. Um, looking at whether to do that in the future is on our roadmap. Uh, we don't have any current, we don't currently have any plans to, to change that, um, but it, it, it's, it's it's certainly, it's certainly something we will consider doing. Um, obviously, with, a, with, a zone, with zones the size of .uk and co.uk, um, that, will, in, that, <coughs> excuse me, um, that will involve some um, um, uh, severe upturns in resource requirements, which is probably the biggest concern rather than the... Um, I think, you know, when, when NSEC 3 was, um, was originally... Um, uh, designed, it was the uh, it was w w w one of the organisations that are most pro NSEC three, and actually we, we were involved in, in in writing the standard was was nominate because we didn't want to see zone walking. Um, I think we're nowhere near as precious about people having access to the zone as we used to be. Um, in fact, we give access to all of our members to the uh, all, we give mem all of our members access to the zone zone files anyway these days. So it's um, it, it, it's not as, as big a deal, so that doesn't mean we'll definitely do it, but it's certainly on our roadmap to, to consider it. But then it's, it would also be an option to go to NSEC. Yeah, I'm th I, think, I, think if we, um, if, I think if we did anything, it would be moved to NSEC. Thank you very much, uh, Brett. Thank you. Next up is Center. 81st. Oh, next is uh, .at. Yes, I, I, was, I was submitting the slides like um, yesterday or something. Thank you for still considering me. Um, so um, what, we, what we did, I'm, I'm talking about the operational things here. Um, we do the significant uh, gear revamp. So we, we changed our network in the last couple of months. Um, and we also started with a VMware-based private cloud, essentially. So it's Dell hardware that um, replaces uh, a lot of our old um, bare metals hardware. And the migrations are ongoing. And first of all, this is all not work that I've been doing, but feel free to talk to Torres, for example, who has been doing a significant amount of this work here for any details. Um, the GTLD registries that we run since a couple of years um, are sort of our first bigger application that we're going to move on to Kubernetes. Um, and that in turn will run on our VMware cloud. So we have invested a lot of time into getting proper CI, CD pipelines, uh, automated security. Um, there are tons of acronyms in that area, as you know. And um, yeah, we want to optimize everything so that we um, actually get to uh, deploying a new TLD essentially in 20 minutes. Um, our R code zero DNS service is growing. Um, we have a couple of additional DLDs that we have been onboarding over the last few months. Uh, we have new locations in exotic places such as Iceland. Yeah. Thank you to the Icelandic registry. Um, and we have massive growth in the number of um, end customer domains that we are hosting to the degree that we are actually now running into structural problems with our statistics generation. So that's our next big topic that we want to address. Um, we also looked at the NSX3 params uh, changes, and we um, changed the NSX3 parameters to uh, zero iterations, no salt, but we are still keeping the opt-out 
Um, it's not as important for the GTLDs, but it would be important to keep opt out for .at because .at is a sparsely signed zone with about 4% DNSSEC. So migrating away from opt out would like essentially double our memory requirements on 200 plus um, Anycast instances around the world. So that's it from the operational side of things. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is Ukraine, UA, dot UA. Uh, we have no slides, but I was told that Dimitri wanted to say some, uh, something. I emailed the notes, uh, sorry for late. <laughs> oh, work on that, yeah, I have my notes. I just had, haven't got enough PowerPoint skills to do this last night after the dinner, sorry. But I did email Lydia and I'll just talk to them and, well, we'll see. So I think we had a virtual meeting in March when I did speak about our operational situation. Well, it had changed a bit, but I just say quickly, we had migrated, I guess in the first 96 hours, most of primary infrastructure abroad. We still keep that abroad. That includes EPP, backend, registry, database, web, email, well, email was moved to Google, and uh, primary DNS and DNS6 signer. Uh, thanks to Sizenik, and sadly I can't say, uh, well, uh, my gratitude in person to them, but maybe I'll see them later. Uh, we got hosting space in Prague, and we are using that as our primary uh, point. And we also had several other locations, which I don't want to disclose, but they were like interim locations before migrated. That's not really a nice automated fallback situation I'd rather have. So we kept our Ukrainian uh, infra intact, it's just not being used. Yep, oh, I see, that's already been posted, yeah. I am reading from a bit of data copy. We have thought of using Amazon, frankly, with five people, including two developers. One of them was in occupied territories and he can function because it's here son. Now the danger of flooding due to Russians planning to blow up the bridge. Uh, and then uh, we basically got a skeleton crew of three ops people plus myself plus one lead developer. And uh, we are using Proxmox for virtualization now on hosted hardware. Amazon, we did double in that. I had three different contacts with Amazon people trying to get those credits for Ukrainian. I got zero response and I'm very unhappy. In comparison, the Cloudflare, which isn't on this slide, I would, did not mention that on that, but that's the first edition did provide us with free denial of service protection using their BGP powered IPv4 only um, infra. So basically all of our locations use their own IP space and we can turn on, on and off that and that is tunneled through the Cloudflare traffic that is sent to us, return path is direct. That's actually a cool solution. I'd recommend it to everybody. But again, no V6 support with Cloudflare, although promised. We do have most people working abroad. We use Signal, Google Docs, and a bit of other stuff. So basically, I never assume people can even work during normal hours because with a recent uh, switch from uh, missiles to drone attacks, we instead of one hour long air raids, we have three or four air raids. You just have to you know, wait between two walls until the attack is over and your building is not destroyed. That's kind of put a bit of a strain on the operational stuff. I'm abroad from February, so I'm working as a remote person, and I think two more people work abroad. The rest of 20 plus people are still in Ukraine, mostly in Kyiv. Uh, we did two major registry changes. Uh, well, uh, I did mention we did suspend UDRP. Uh, conflict resolution because courts can be really operating. Oh, sorry, maybe I was too quiet the whole time. I'm sorry. I may be <laughs> too, too close to Mike. And we had stopped expiration of domains in the registry. That means that if the registrant isn't paying, we are not deleting their registra registered domains. We just uh, disable them from publishing the DNS zone, but they can restore them as they see fit. And we plan to keep this uh, situation until the war is over and maybe some several months of uh, gap time. Uh, we also had resorted to raising our prices significantly. It was about 40% the local currency. But if you re-index back to euro dollar, it was eventually basically 15% of euro, but spread over six years. Current inflation 
six years was the last time we did reindex price. We still charge in local currency and we basically had, I think, 30% uh, official inflation in Grivna this year, uh, well, year on year. So that kind of made us a bit better, but we still had a lot of domains of essentially dead. We don't publish that dead percentile. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's over 10%. It varies because some registrars have these parts when they put payments and they kind of uh, advance us some money even though they don't need it. So that was actually a nice help. Um, okay, uh, I guess uh, that's it. Oh, I didn't mention specifically the Anycas partners. They're, they're on this slide, there are more. Uh, I'm also grateful to other people from St. Community who did approach us. And I got some help from some of them and I haven't got help from some of them. Doesn't mean that I don't like you just because I can only do so many things at any given day a week. So if somebody wants to reach out and maybe offer some expertise, say the cloud migration or registry failover or any other things, data analysis, I would really be glad to implement, but I guess I have to hold on on that because I can't do any of that complicated stuff right now. So I guess that's it and maybe I'll check again my notes, nothing. Uh, maybe uh, you want to ask me something. Thank you. I appreciate your attention here. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have any questions, so if no questions from the room, then uh, we can go on to the slides from center. Thank you. So I'll be quick. Uh, in terms of updates, uh, probably the most relevant to you is the updates on the signs of life crawler. So we currently have 18 CCTLDs and 100 GTLDs. Um, and uh, in terms of updates, Patrick's working on second version and will probably, hopefully, be publishing next week a report on the accuracy um, because the crawler is quite accurate. So if you're interested in more, reach out to Patrick. Um, and if you want to be involved, definitely reach out to Patrick because he's always looking for new CCTLDs to join. Um, otherwise, the big highlight of this year for us is EU policy, which I'm sure you're aware of how much policy there is um, affecting uh, CCTLDs in Europe especially. Um, we published some fact sheets, so for any of you who want to catch up on the files we're following, if you go into our member area, we've got a page with fact sheets which basically summarize the um, policy files in kind of accessible language. Um, and then lastly, we're back to hybrid events. So like today, uh, we had the Jamboree in Prague in May and uh, we've got a GA in November, um, which everything is now hybrid. And so that's update from us. I don't know if there are any questions. Perfect. Stefan, I'll hand back to you. Okay, thank you. And um, from our side, um, we still have the co-chair elections um, because Jeremy's term, um, as mentioned on mailing list, is uh, ending after two years and he um, is willing to continue and since we did not receive any other apply, uh, applicant to, uh, people who wanted to uh, be co-chair um, there's no voting involved and uh, i would like to uh, thank jaromir for continuing as co-chair of the tech working group uh, jaromir would you like to add something to that i see clapping your hands i don't hear it but i see it <laughs> thank you very much uh, jaromir yeah, it's a thank you, and definitely it's a pleasure to work with with this group. And um, I hope that next time I will be able to thank you also in person. <laughs> okay. Um, on the agenda, we also had uh, uh, slides for insect-free discussion, and some of the participants already mentioned in the through the table that they are changing or are going to change the NSREC3 uh, parameters. Um, I created a presentation uh, with room for discussions. 
because the lot of a lot of slides for the Tour de Table were very late. So we uh, started with an alternative. But if I look at the time and you want to have some lunch, I will go to this presentation to give some insights what we did at SIDN. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, what is on the agenda for this meeting, you can read for yourself a very small presentation. So next slide, please. So the changes for uh, .nl, uh, we do remove the out flag. We set the iterations from five to zero. So we were already uh, quite good at uh, the guidelines. We, not, we were not at 150 like some uh, normal domains or second level domains. And we moved from uh, salt length of eight to zero. Um, we had some issues with OpenDNSSEC. Uh, we collaborated with NLNet Labs to get a new version that um, improves or corrects the behavior of the moving to a short length of zero. Um, next slide, please. In our acceptance uh, environment, we uh, saw a size change for .nl from about 3.3 gigabytes to 4.1 gigabytes. And uh, this is with about 60% DNSSEC signed domains in the zone. Uh, so it's quite uh, a jump, um, but um, we expect that it will uh, help with insect free caching and um, we'll see uh, how the memory uh, usage is because we just did this uh, last week on our acceptance uh, setup and we'll still have to see um, what uh, exactly has changed in the system for crop performance, etc. And the last slide is uh, for the discussion, but since it's almost lunchtime, I suggest you do that during lunch and other people can uh, lunch from the cells. Thank you very much for your attention and for providing your two the tablet slides. Um, please uh, uh, give them a bit earlier next time so we don't have to squeeze everything in and uh, ask, for, uh, ask for it again. Um, from this side, um, I hope you have a, a very good lunch and I hope to see you online or in the next meeting uh, in person. Thank you. Okay, so I guess that's it for those of you in person. Uh, we're now free for lunch until 2 p.m., so you have an hour and a half. Um, if you have any questions, I guess ask each other, and <laughs> or, um, all the meeting slides will be put on the meeting page and communicated to you. So enjoy lunch. Uh, yes. <laughs>